is supposed to, first of all, once he analyzes his income, there are basic rules of your income. Uh, you take your income, net income, what goes into your bank account, that is your net income. A third of that income is what should go towards paying your rent. Your housing needs. Your housing needs. Mm -hmm. And where are we driving this? We derive this, uh, for those who did uh, sociology, there's a philosopher uh, called Abraham Maslow. He developed a hierarchy, what is popularly known as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, number one uh, on, the, on, the, on the primary needs, is shelter, food, and clothing. Yeah. So your salary, net salary, a third, maximum, should go to your rent. rent. If you are able to save, because that's where you start saving, you should be able to not spend a, a, a third, but try spend a quarter of your salary. Why? Because, fair enough, you need to live in a modest neighborhood, not necessarily the leafy suburbs, and you also need to live in a neighborhood that uh, has basic amenities and secure. Mm. So if you are able to lower your, 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 your cost of rent to probably a quarter, then you leave room for savings. Number two, the other, hard, the other third, uh, you use it for the secondary needs, uh, buying the clothes and other items, school fees and what have you. If you have children, you're paying for school fees, electricity, uh, traveling costs. They should, take care, they should be taken care of by the other third. Mm. Now, the remaining third is for savings and uh, social security. And this third is what will help uh, Robert get out of his mess. He'll also need to readjust his lifestyle, probably see which assets that he has that he can be able to sell, clear off the loans such that now he stays a debt-free yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, he has a car that yes. he can sell. Yeah. That X6 like will probably get him, I don't even know, maybe, I don't know, maybe yeah. three, five million? And if he's married, I believe he should be. Uh, yeah. Some of these decisions that you make, you need now to bring on board your spouse. Yes. So that you let your spouse know, now, babe, this is the situation. Uh, I've been living a fake life. So let us readjust. Because even the children, they need to readjust. Even your friends will need to readjust because this issue of uh, living a fake life, mm. uh, usually the car that you're driving, the clubs that you, go to. that you go to, then you'll not want to be seen to be taking certain kind of drinks. So you want the finer <laughs> drinks that are costly. So you, this fake life continues for, so you need to readjust even your friends your immediate family, such that they should know that uh, I'll be able to take you out on a Sunday for lunch, but not every Sunday. So we'll be required uh, every two Sundays we cook from home so that we, we save our costs. Mm. Uh, if you are, you are shopping in the, in, the, in, the, in the main malls, you need now to lower your, your, your standards. You check where you can be able to, to shop and remain within the second third because all your monthly expenses, whether you're paying domestic workers, you are, uh, you are fueling your car, all your expenses should remain in the second third. Remember the first third we settled for? Rent. Rent. Second, second third, third, it is all your expenses. Now the other third, leave it for? Saving. Saving. And the reason why we are saying you leave it for saving, once, remember the CRB nowadays? Yeah. So in case you have defaulted, which I believe he had. Yes, he has. So it means that his name is on the CRB listing. And therefore means it will affect his uh, ability to... To borrow later. To borrow mm -hmm. later. Mm. So he needs to readjust all. In. If he's driving a, an X6, for example, let him sell, sell the X6. And because he needs a car for movement, let him get a modest car. And remember, some of these modest cars, uh, maybe an X is an expensive car to maintain. So in yes. case of a breakdown... Yeah. That car requires much more money. Even insurance. Yes. Do you know how serious it is? A lot of these guys who live fake lives yeah. end up not able to pay insurance per year. Yes. They either take a loan to pay insurance yeah. or they pay insurance per month. Yes. Because of how big the amount is. I mean, you're paying insurance of like 300,000. And uh, I have a friend of mine who is an Askari, who is a traffic officer. He told me that in traffic, he doesn't check insurance for the small cars. Chances are high the small cars have paid the insurance. 
he checks for the beakers. What? Why? Because that is a lifestyle Robert is living and others. And so therefore, insurance being a cost and a huge cost, you'll find a huge car is on third party insurance. And even the third party is uh, he's not in a position to, to pay. pay. So it therefore means he needs to lower his standards wow. of living, yeah. get a smaller car that the family will fit. It is okay. People will talk today, tomorrow. Uh, the other day, they will, fail. they will not have a topic to talk. Once he's back to his footing, he'll buy the big car that he was used to. And probably he'll not buy it on loan. He'll, he'll be able to afford it cash. And after having done that, after clearing the debt, he needs now to think of ways to bridge the income. And one of the ways to bridge income is starting a business. Before we start a business? Yes. Uh, because he's employed, he's yes. never started a business before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps what he can begin to do is okay. So he sold his he sold his car. Maybe he's bought a Vitz or an Annex or an Alex or yeah. a small car. Yeah. That is maybe six hundred thousand. Yeah. He's probably moved from the big house in Kilelesha to a much smaller one where he's paying a third yes. rent of his salary. And he's made all these adjustments and has been able to pay off the debt. Correct. Now, once he pays off the debt, yeah. the next thing he must do yeah. is also put together an emergency fund. Correct. Because if something happens, do you know, I was reading somewhere yeah. that, um, so this was by the Africa Development Bank, and the Africa Development Bank was saying that there's 350 million middle class in Africa. In Africa. And out of this 350 million middle class, 180 million of them, which is I think about 60%, are on the edge, on the edge, like they are a illness or a job loss away from poverty. So they're literally on the edge. So you don't want to be on the edge. We don't want that. We want to be able to get to the place where we are actually thriving, thriving in the sense that if an emergency occurs, a job loss happens, I can survive for at least three months without an income as I wait to get another job. So that's what he needs. He needs a buffer, you know, create margins for himself, right? Before then he moves to starting a business and investing and doing all these other things. Um, because then that will cover his, or create some sort of a safety net for him. Okay, so now let's assume that has happened and he decides I need an additional income stream. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Because he's decided, I want to live this kind of lifestyle where I live in a nice neighborhood because that's what he wants and he considers lovely, but he's doing it at the wrong time when he's not able to afford it. So you're saying, if I hear you correctly, that if that's the lifestyle he wants, then a business may be the best way to get it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Because it's able, he's able to get more income. Uh, first oh. of all, mm -hmm. let, me, let me just uh, echo what you've said. And the recommendation by uh, African Development Bank, uh, IFC, is that you need to have a saving, an emergency fund, that should be able to sustain you for three to six months yeah. for you to consider yourself safe. So that is one of the things that after getting himself out of the debts, he needs to get such a fund. How does he create the fund before he even get to the business? He can start as deliberate saving mechanism. Deliberate saving mechanism is whereby you you commit yourself, you commit your salary and say, if I'm earning 100,000, 10% uh, of it is 10,000. 15% of it is 15,000. I should be able to deliberately save the 10, the 15,000 to create an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You can have a check of uh, system with your bank. You have an arrangement with your bank where you're telling your bank that I am, I am uh, giving you a standing order that on the moment my salary comes in, please take away 10,000, 15,000, and send it to, for example, you can have uh, a savings and insurance scheme with, uh, with an insurance company where you are having a deliberate saving mechanism. You can come to FIDA, for example, and say every month I'm committing, I'll be buying uh, shares or bonds worth 15,000 every month, month in, month out. So you instruct your bank, that on the moment my salary comes in, maybe it comes in on 23rd, 24th, 25th, 30th. So a day or two after my salary comes in, which is say 28th, uh, debit my account and remit this money to 
That is how you create a buffer, you create an emergency fund. Such that now this money becomes part of your budget. Mm. Where you will ne you'll not be in a position to go check as you're drawing money in your account. You see like you have excess money. And so therefore you can do window shopping. That money should be wiped off. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So that you don't see it, you don't touch it. You don't it. see it, you don't it touch it. It goes to your money market fund, you save that. Yes. It goes to your account with the broker, it yes. goes to your fund, your bonds. Yes. That is the easiest way of creating an emergency fund. Okay. Yes, where you make a deliberate effort. Now, for you who is employed, no, for you who is in business, and you also want to uh, create an emergency fund, it is also possible for you to do that. Why? Because you know your expenses. You know that on this particular day, I'm expecting Rina, for example. I supply Rina with, with, uh, with say, uh, clocks and what have you, or books. I'm the one who is publishing. So uh, Rina is supposed to pay me on the 20th. Out of the amount of money that she'll be paying me, taxes, uh, X amount, uh, resources, rent, publishers, what have you, are this amount. Uh, my profit, X amount. Of that profit amount, just put a deliberate effort yeah. of saving that money. That money, uh, and there is, a, there is an advert that was, was there, uh, one of the billboards in town, mm. where one of the insurance companies was saying that, uh, remember that your children are not your retirement. I don't know whether, yes. Yeah. I don't know whether you saw that. Uh, I haven't, but I remember doing, a, I have a cardboard that yes. I wrote down yeah. and took a picture with that says, your children your children are not a retirement plan yes and that is where now i'm coming in in terms of starting a business yeah you don't start a business that it should give you return immediately most business they have been mm. they have shown that uh, number one within the first two years they collapse yeah. they start making money from year five mm. so you start a business not with a plan of immediately making money but you start the business with the intention that it will be either your retirement plan or four or five years from now, it will start giving you a return. A return that will be able to bridge the gap that will now move you from where you are to the next level. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you also need to be very careful that the total income of the business, you do not see it as your own money. You have, you remember that part of the money that is coming in from the business is money that is owed to the business. So you do not eat all the profit. Because tomorrow when the business needs uh, seed capital reinvestment, you will not be able to, you, when you eat it, you will not be able to reinvest. And that is how the businesses are collapsing. That should be another topic, Rina, we should be we able should to, get into. we should be able to dis discuss mm. how to start a business, how to run yeah. a successful business. Yeah. Because we also having instances where uh, people are starting businesses and they are not able to run uh, mm -hmm. them well. Now, let us go back to where we were on the emergency fund. The other way that you can create an emergency fund mm -hmm. is if this emergency fund is coming to the fixed income, where yeah. that is so, where. So fixed income yes. as an investment? As an investment. Okay, so now we're looking at what, now he's paid off his debt. Yes. He has uh, come to a place where he's saved enough money. He probably has that emergency fund. Let's assume that emergency fund is three months of his expenses. Yes. And he has put it maybe in a money market fund. Now yeah. he has more income coming in. Where does he take that monthly income yes. as it comes in? Now, where he takes that monthly income, remember that bonds uh, give a relatively higher uh, return than uh, all these other investments and a secure return. You know, th that's an interesting statement you've made. Yes. Eh? Because every time I talk to clients yeah. about bonds, they're just like, Ati, bonds are for my grandmother and grandfather. Those boring things that I have to go and line up on, at Central Bank. Who does those things? I mean, I'm young. I have time to, to, to lose. I mean, to, I have time to lose. And I want to make two times my investment. Alex, what are you talking about bonds? And so tell me. Let me tell you something. And it's unfortunate that that is a kind of uh, uh, mentality that is there. And that is why we, we need to have this talk year in, year out, day in, day out. It's extremely unfortunate that in 2017, by December 2017, the retail 
clients that were registered at the central bank, people who can be able to buy bonds were only 10,000 people. Imagine. 10,000? 10,000 10, people. In a population of 48 million, and in a population where the registered pin holders in Kenya and the ones who are doing uh, the annual returns to the KRA, mm. they are or in excess of 6 million. The people who, was, who, who are filed, income. They filed yes, their returns. They filed their return. Of course, in the 6 million, there are those who are filing new returns. We are not, we, we are not interested in those ones. But of the 6 million, at least 4.5 million, they are filing that they have had an income. income. Then now, of the 4.5 million, only 10,000 have a CDS account. With Central Bank. With Central Bank. That is what is ailing our retail, securing market, retail market for bonds. Now, uh, of late we have seen, this year I can tell you, we have seen an interest in uh, retail investors. People are, are, are starting to get interest, what, is, what are bonds? What do I need to open? A, how do I open a CDS account? And we'll take uh, you through how to open a CDS account. What are the benefits of holding a bond? For example, today, uh, Central Bank has just released the results of, uh, of three bonds that they were issuing. Okay. One of the bonds that were issuing is a, a, about a six-year bond. Yeah. And uh, it has come out at an interest rate of 11.47%. There is nobody who is giving that kind of a return. So if I invest for six years, yes. every year I will earn 11.47%. Percent. Where if I put the money in, let's say, a money market, I'll earn 8, yes. 9%. Percent. Eight, if nine I put percent. it in my bank account, in a savings account, yeah. I will earn 3. Do you know, there's a, a, a client um, I spoke to who has done very well. Yeah. She's saved 4 million shillings. And she told me that that money is sitting in a current account, a current, Four million account. current account, 4 million shillings. Yes. What other assets do you have? None. So she saved and she's done very well, yeah. but the money sits in an account where she's not earning, she's earning zero. So that's what I find people don't understand. In a current account, you earn zero. And in fact, you pay the bank for having your money in the account, yes. right? Because there's ledger fees. Yet, with that 4 million, she can get over 40K is it 40,000? No, 400, 400. Over 400,000 in a year. Yes. If she just, yeah, it's an over 400,000 in a year. An average rate of 10%. Yeah, and it's secure. And if that person invested in an infrastructure bond, the money uh, goes in excess because for an infrastructure bond, uh, the latest infrastructure bond that we, was issued was at 12.67%. That is about an average of 126,000 per annum, per million. So it means uh, if you do 126,000 times 4, we are dealing with about 860,000. That is money that uh, yeah. uh, she has lost. And this is money that... And this is be. money that you can use to finance so many different things. Yes. Because that's like, it can end up being like 40,000 a month. And a month. That's an income. And you know, the person she's helping, it's her bank. Yeah. Because what the bank is doing is picking this her 4 million and put it in a treasury bond. The bank earns interest and also charges her, uh, her ledger fees. Mm. So net net, the earner <laughs> is a bank. Yeah. So these are the people that we are talking about. They are the people that we want, they get into the, the bond market. And the bond market, uh, Rina, is a very secure market. There's something, interest. you've talked about secure. Yeah. There's somebody, something somebody asked me the other day when we were talking about bonds and they were like, but this government, They've borrowed so much money. We're so indebted. I don't know euro bond. I don't know which other bond. And they're constantly borrowing. Aren't they going to default? No, government cannot default. Yeah. And the reason why government cannot default, for example, uh, any time you walk out and you go to a supermarket, you fuel, uh, you call someone, uh, you go to that bank and withdraw money, government is taxing. There is nothing that... Uh, you do that government doesn't tax including uh, the phone that you're holding the clothes that you're wearing it it has a government mark yeah, in it yeah. and remember also government has the ability to borrow to pay you so in, tough, in terms of uh, defaulting it cannot default okay. so it is the securest avenue of investing your money and that is the reason why uh, you're seeing that nowadays banks are reducing their credit growth to the common monanchi 
and preferring investing that money to the, with, the, to the, with the government. With the government. Why? Because it, government is a secure investment. How do you open a CDS account, for example, if you are interested in opening a CDS account? Yeah. Because that is for, for starters, that is where we start. Yeah. If you do not have a CDS account with Central Bank, not the CDS account that you, you buy shares with, yeah. Because when we tell uh, people that you buy, you, you open a CDS account, many people think that we are talking about the CDS account that you open shares with. With Central Bank. Y yes. So CDS, by the way, for anyone who's listening, is just Central Depository Settlement Account. It is like the bank where your assets are held. So before, what used to happen is you would get a certificate, you carry it home with you, and you keep it somewhere. But now, with an electronic system of trading for both bonds and equities, you have the opportunity to open an account electronically. It sits held by a custodian, um, and, and for bonds, the custodian is a central bank. For shares, the custodian is the CDSC, which is an, an organization that was formed to be the custodian for shares, everybody's shares. So the one that Alex is talking about is a CDS account, central depository account, specifically for bonds. So let's talk about the process, right? Yes. So for somebody who wants to open an account, they begin by going to central bank, yes. right? They go to central bank, they fill out a form. Maybe talk us through that. And then also the second question I have is, why 10,000 accounts? I know okay, it's old data because the same year we had uh, Emma Kiba that came, we ended up with 105,000 people who in invested in Emma Kiba. So those accounts increased on account of Emma Kiba. But before Emma Kiba, there were only 10,000 accounts that were open for retail clients. So talk us through the process of opening an account, but also why? Why, why, why don't people open accounts with Central Bank? And why is it Let difficult? me start by why. Okay. One of the reasons why most Kenyans, one is enlightenment, en enlightenment, investor education. Many people do not know of this product called bonds. And those who know, they do not know the process of opening the CDS account. Yeah. And even though they know the process, they see it as tedious. Remember that you have at one point to physically visit a central bank to pick the form and to also deliver it back. Because when you are signing, you'll, you'll pick the form, take it to your bank, the bank fills and confirms those are your banking details for purposes of remittance of uh, your interest payment. Okay, let me just perhaps ask Tony, put up the bond, if it's already up, if it's yeah. up, that's great. Then let's continue so that we walk through as people can see how do you actually do that. Yes, mm -hmm. so once you go to central bank, mm -hmm. And do not be afraid, because that's the other reason why you find Kenyans have not uh, walked to Central Bank. Most Kenyans do not even know. They only see a bank, a big bank, they know where Central Bank is. But they are scared even to walk through. But it's a very friendly place where you will just walk in, you take the form, you take it to your bank, the bank fills and confirms that uh, Irina or Alex has an account in, for example, Barclays Bank. Uh, this branch, this is the account number, the bank confirms. Then you take that form with your passport size photo, take it back to Central Bank, where now you sign a Central Bank uh, watches. You do not sign before. Once now you are done with that process, you wait for another uh, 10 to 14 days for the account to be, opened. to be opened. Once now the account is opened, then you can now be able to invest in bonds. And how do you invest in bonds? You need a minimum of 50,000 to invest in a bond. And uh, for a treasury 50,000 shillings. So people yes. think also that you need a lot of money to yeah. start. Yeah. I mean, of course, the more that you can invest in bonds, the better. Yes. But even with 50,000, you can begin. Yes. And from there, thereafter, is multiples of 50,000. So you cannot invest a bond for 75,000. You you can invest a bond for 100,000, 150. 200,000, 250, 300,000, like that. It is always in multiples of 50,000. The other thing that uh, we need to uh, uh, let Kenyans is, we in FIDA, we, we have a product where we can be able to open for you uh, a nominee account, where we save you now the cost of going to Central Bank. We still have the bond, uh, it's yours, the remittance of the, uh, uh, of the interest income will still be yours. Uh, it will be remitted straight to your bank account. Uh, the only thing now that we are, we, are, we are saving you is the hassle of you physically going to your bank, but we will do the KYC details. So you'll come with the documents that gives us the KYC details. We open a, a normal CDS account. 
then you, uh, we open a nominee account with Central Bank. It also takes about 10 to 14 days to open the account. To open the account. And KYC, by the way, is just yes. know, why, know your know client. Your, yeah. It's just your ID. Yes. Your utility bill, yes. picture, those are the, yeah. the documents that we ask. Yeah, because in this era of money laundering, in the event that uh, Central Bank asks uh, for, say, uh, FAIDA uh, Investment Bank nominee account, one, two, three, who is that client? We'll be able to provide and say, uh, this is the client, uh, and these are the documents of that client. Mm. So that is why it is important for you to provide to us uh, those KYC details. Uh, such that in the event we are asked, we also know who our client is. Mm. So we will help you invest in bonds through our nominee account. So once now you have opened the CDS account, then now you can put in the amount of money that you want to put in and buy the bond that you prefer. And for your information, we need also to let Kenyans know mm. that in case you see it's a 15-year bond, a 20-year bond, a 10-year bond, and you think that you may have an emergency in two, three years. That is why you have the secondary market. Yes. You can sell your bond to the secondary market and you, you get back your money. Mm. And at any one point when you need to buy back the bond or any other bond, you still do not need to wait for the time that a central bank will issue a primary auction. You can still come to us and say, Alex, I want to get a bond. Get me a bond that is 10 years, 15 years, 2 years, 5 years to maturity, 25 years, 30 years. Then I'll give you what is available in the secondary market yeah. and these are the prices. Then you invest, you put your money and you buy. You know, this is brilliant. I, there's a client who came and told me how uh, they have an income and a, that they get every single month from bonds. Yeah. So you know what they did? Because bonds are issued every month, they bought bonds every month for six months because the thing is that you know they pay interest every six months so instead of waiting a whole six months for you to get your bond she split her money and bought a bond month one bought another one month two bought another one month three bought another month four because what she was looking for is a frequent income that comes and so you know she was a bit elderly and she then did that and every single month uh for the period of you know, the number of years she has invested for, she gets this income. And it's just such a, a fantastic way. So now, I want you to, to just explain. Again, you may have touched it here or there, but what are the benefits of bonds as an investment opportunity? And why now? You know, now we are in a season of, um, we, we're kind of in a recession. We're slowly getting out of yeah. it. Our economy is in a bit of a very challenging situation. We have, um, uh, you know, a lot of companies have shut down. People are fearful. Even Robert, who we read about, yes, he's an accountant in a middle-level firm, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know whether this company is going to continue to exist. So, why bonds as as the example of an investment for him to invest in now? Number one, Rina, a bond gives you what we call fixed income, whereby, as you have clearly illustrated, you have this uh, uh, group where they have invested every six months. They invested in bonds, and so therefore, uh, from the seventh month. The bond that they bought in January, in July, will be paying the first coupon. The one that they bought in February, it will be paying its first coupon in August. The one they bought in March, it will pay first coupon in uh, September. The one they bought in April, it will pay its first coupon in October. The one they bought in May will pay in November. And the one they bought in June pays in December. December. And the cycle Continue. continues. Mm. So if you are able to layer your bonds properly, they give you what we call a regular income. And for you who is uh, in real estate, uh, most of the returns of people in the real estate is between 8 and 10%. Where? Yes. In which country? And most people, with COVID... Listen, it's gone down. Yes. <laughs> it's gone with down. With COVID, yeah. it's about 5 yes. to 8%. Yes. <laughs> so now you have an opportunity of investing in bonds yeah. and layering them. You layer them such that every month you have an income. The same income you would have gotten and probably higher you would have gotten from rental income. And it is hassle free. You do not have to deal with a tenant who we are talking about secret. This one, uh, the, the house is vacant. This one has gone three months without paying. No. When you layer your bonds properly, you can be able to generate yourself regular income. 
What is the other benefit of a bond? It is the fastest way to borrow man, money from the bank. I do not know if most Kenyans know that. The bond, uh, unlike real estate, the bank, by the time it is giving you money against a collateral of real estate, it needs a value yeah. to come value your land. Then it needs a... And it will not rely on one valuer. So it will send three valuers at your own cost. Then it will uh, require a legal process where you are charging the title at right. the uh, uh, land's uh, office. office. So it takes long. It takes all long. With a bond... And by the way, they don't give you 100% of the value of your yes, property. Yes, they'll give you a certain percent. They'll give you maybe 50, mm. uh, 60% of the value of your land. Now, with a bond, the only thing that your bank will do is to call Central Bank, confirm that that bond is held by you. They will write to Central Bank, put that bond under lien, that that bond is now held uh, in trust. You are the holder of the bond, but it is... Uh, for example, Stand Big Bank, Cooperative Bank, have an interest in that bond. What that means is that you cannot sell that bond at will because now it is under lien. It has someone else has an interest in it until the lien is lifted. And the lien will be lifted once the, you have completed paying your loan. Once that process is done, and I can tell you it doesn't take more than 10 days, the lo your loan approval will be done yeah. and immediately you are able to access your money. So you may not necessarily, if you need money, you may not necessarily need to sell your bond. You will just walk to your bank and tell them, I, ha I hold this bond. It is for 10 years. Uh, it is uh, worth 1 million. And the bank will comfortably give you between uh, 75 to 90% worth of your bond. Wow. Yeah. So I want to take a pause. I can't believe how fast time has gone. Eh? Yes. We've almost taken 45 minutes. Aja. Almost. Imagine. I so. didn't realize that. <laughs> we need to go into Q&A. And thank you yeah. so much, guys, for interacting and for the questions that are coming in on Facebook and on YouTube um, and the comments as well. So thank you for watching. Uh, Nina says, what is the minimum amount one can use to buy the bonds? I think we talked about that. We said it's 50,000 shillings for regular bonds and it's uh, 100,000 shillings for uh, infrastructure bonds, yes, right? Yes, and I yes. want us to talk about infrastructure bonds. Yes. Again, um, Edith says, can it be done online? Can yes. it be done online? Uh, the opening of the account? No, it cannot be done online. Unless we do it for them. Yes, but we can do it for you online. Yeah. The other one is, can one send someone to pick the form from CBK initially, then once filled in and stamped by the bank, you can take it yourself back physically to CBK? Yes, yes. I thought you need to sign in front of... Because that remember, person, we had to physically go to CBK. No, the person, if I got the, uh, the question right, yeah. they are saying, can I send someone to pick the form? Yes. Then they go fill it with the bank. Ah. Then they physically take it. Yes, you, okay. they can do that. Awesome. Then John asks, how does someone out of the country open a CDS account? Fantastic question. If you're out of the country, you're, you're in the States, you're in Germany, you're in Switzerland, yeah. you want, you're Kenyan, yes. and you want to invest in the, 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 the government bond, yes. can you do that? No, uh, two ways. Through the nominee account that we provide in FAIDA, or through sending the, the forms through G4S, FedEx, and what have you, to Central Bank. They can do that. Okay. Yeah. So there's actually a process for diaspora clients. Yes. In fact, guys, if you just go to www.centralbank.go.ke, I believe that's the website, yes. and just go into the invest tab on their website, all these details are there. How to open an account if yeah. you're in Kenya, how to open an account. And then they even list um, the different places you can open accounts, investment banks, as well as, uh, as other commercial banks. Commercial also. banks mm -hmm. and also their satellite bank uh, offices there. For example, in Kericho, Eldoret, uh, Kisumu, Nakuru, Meru, their satellite, uh, Mombasa, they have their satellite central banks uh, as well. Yes. Okay. Another question is, uh, what about those whose bank accounts are dormant? Can they still open the account with Central Bank? So mm. perhaps I can just answer that one. So the fact is, now if your account is dormant, you, you cannot send money there. So if your account is dormant, the first thing you must do is go to your bank account 
and reactivate their account. Correct. And reactivating, you can just need to fill out a, a dormancy form to reactivate it, account reactivation form actually it's called, and you deposit a small amount of money and your account is reactivated. Some banks, you don't even need to deposit money, you just fill out the form and it's reactivated. Because your bank will need to sign the application form from central bank to verify that that account exists and is actually active. So you need to have your account um, active. And then someone else says, how is the buying of bonds done if done individually? Is there an online process? By the way, once you've opened your account with Central Bank, there's what we call Treasury Mobile Direct, yeah. which is fantastic, or TMD. So once you've opened the account, you can sign up for TMD and you can then apply online yeah. through your mobile phone. Yes, yeah? even, even availing, and uh, we need to let people know that once you buy the bond, you can trade it in the secondary market the following day. After buying the bond, to, for example, the, I've talked about the prime election that is uh, the results have been announced today. Uh, Kenyans will pay on Monday. On Tuesday, you can sell that bond. So if you're on Treasury Mobile Direct, you can avail that bond to your preferred uh, stock broker to sell. And the other way that you make money from bonds is sell, buying and selling in the secondary market. Buying, selling in the secondary market. That is another way of making bonds, where, uh, making money where you will sell at a lower interest rate that, than you, you bought and therefore making capital gains. Uh, but that one you will guide you through with your stockbroker, preferred stockbroker, which you hope is FIDA. Uh, you come to us, we tell you, you buy here, you sell here, you make this amount of money uh, and what have you. So sign up and sign for. Treasury Mobile Direct for you to avail the bond. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So we have the details of our emails scrolling on the screen. Um, that's the email, FIDA. No. Fixed What's income. <laughs> Fixed income. Fixed income at, at FIB.co.ke. Thank you. Yes. Um, Joseph is asking great information. He's watching from YouTube and he says, if someone is not Kenyan, is it possible to invest in bonds in Kenya? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, we have just guided you. We just need your KYC details. We'll open. Yeah. Yes. It is possible and yeah. we can assist you. Write to us and we'll help you set up that yeah. account. In fact, I need to say that uh, the infrastructure bond, most of the holders, other than the local banks, are foreigners. Say that again? The infrastructure bonds, just like in shares, for example, Safaricom. The majority holders of that infrastructure majority bond. Majority holders? What is that? Are foreigners. Why? Because they are enlightened. They already know that we have we have a beautiful girl in Kenya, and they are coming for her. <laughs> yes. Which is sad. I mean, honestly, we the reason it's so attractive, by the way, is because it's tax free. So I believe the last one that was issued by Central Bank was in Ma April. Was in April. It was in April. At 12.67%. 12.67%. Yes. And the 12.67% is tax free. Now, what yes. people don't realize is that every single interest earning instrument, whether that is your savings account or fixed deposit account or a corporate bond or any interest earning anything, including treasury bills and treasury bonds, yeah. there's a withholding tax of between 10 to 15%. Yes. Right? Actually, let me make it clear. Uh -huh. When you invest in treasury bills, uh, net interest income, what will come to you is 15, uh, is 85 percent of your interest because 15 percent is withholding tax. 15 percent withholding. Withholding tax. Mm -hmm. If you invest in an FXD bond that is five years, FXD, two years, FXD is the fixed, the normal, the fixed normal bond, yes, income bond. From two to ten years, your net interest uh, income will be deducted 15 percent. 15. Yes. Two to ten years. Two to ten years. Okay. If you invest a bond that is 10 to 30 years, it is 10%. Okay. That's the amount uh, government uh, with, uh, withholds as, your, as, as, as tax. However, with infrastructure bonds, they do not tax anything. So they are very attractive. And I will tell you, go for an infrastructure bond. Because you have, if it is 12.67%, it is 12.67%. That, that's the amount of money that will come to your account. Okay, awesome. Um, there's a comment also about, um, oh yeah, so Bob Karina says, thank you for watching. He says the central bank maintains the, cent the CDS for the government bonds and CDS maintains a CDS account for shares. And there were plans, by the way, it's true. There were plans to have one institution that holds all securities, but that hasn't yet been actualized. 
Um, so Debs is asking a great question. She's asking, when FIDA opens the account for me, what do they charge? We charge 2,000 shillings. 2,000 shillings? Yes. And is it a one-off fee? It's a one-off fee. The only other fee that will come in is when we are buying the bond, because there is a swift cost that is charged by the bank. It's about uh, 500 shillings that is charged by the bank. That is the only other cost that will come in. Yeah. But the 2,000 is a one-off fee. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then there is Steve. Could you repeat what layering of bonds is? Is is layering where you are able to 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 buy a, a bond with the intention that it will give you a a return every month. month. Yeah. So so that you have a regular income, whereby we are saying bonds pay interest every six months. So today we are in July. So if you buy your first bond that was issued in, in July, you buy it today, then you are expecting your first coupon payment will come in in January next year. Then August, you buy another bond. That bond, the first interest payment will come in February. Then in September, you buy another bond that will, take your, will give you uh, interest income in March. Then in November, you buy another bond. It will give you interest income in, in uh, April. December, you buy. It will give you in uh, May. Then like that. Once you buy for six consecutive months, you are sure that, that bond, uh, the bonds that you're holding will be giving you regular income month in, month out, month in, month out, until they mature. And when they mature, uh, during the primary auction, you have the, uh, you can be able to write to central bank that instead of giving me the money roll over so you bid for the next bond that is being uh, issued so the amount of money that you are supposed to receive for that bond you roll over to a next bond so you will continuously be having regular income month in month out you know yeah uh, an idea just popped into my mind yes a lot of times you find when people are coming to the point of retiring, yeah. they get a lump sum. Okay, mm -hmm. so they've been paying pension, a pension yeah. every month yes. for the length of time they've been working, yeah. both at NHIF, NHIF and hopefully also with a pension fund, a pension fund yeah. whether independently or through their employer. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, when they get to the age of 65 and withdraw this pension, do you know what they do? They go and start a business. And it's a business. They've never been in business They have before. never been in business. It's a business they do not know. Exactly. Yes. And you just said, it takes five years to yes. be able to get... And now, when you're that age, you don't have any other income. Yeah. Now, the alternative is to get into this... Can you imagine now you get into this situation? Let's say you've gotten 10 million. Yeah. Or 20 million from your pension. I'm just throwing numbers here. And you decide, I'm going to split this money. If for the next six months... I'll buy two million, then the next one maybe three million, the next one maybe one million, the next one, or whatever, you can divide it equally, two million, two million, two million for six months, and every single month you will earn an interest. Because on two million shillings, let's say you put it in the infrastructure bond, you're earning? That's 126, 126, that is uh, uh, 252 divided by two. So you have 126 every, every, month. every, every month. 126. Every month, if you're investing two million. Is it 126? Yes, it's 126. Oh, every yeah, yeah six because, months. because it's six months. Yes, every yes. six months. So it's 126,000 yes. per month yes. as your income yeah. and your two million. Actually, for five months, the only one month you'll not have the money because you're investing 10 million. You divide this 10 million into two, 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 two. Yeah. Two million, two million, yeah, two for million. Five million months. For five months. So it's just one month you want. It is have. only one month that you'll not have yes. income. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I mean, you're not, this, it's not risky. You're yes. not wondering, is this company going to go under? Are they no. going to delay my payments? Do you know, the other day I saw on the news this lady crying. She invested in this opportunity. When her husband died, he left her with 2.9 million shillings. And unfortunately, the investment opportunity went under. And actually didn't go under, but has not, they're not responding. They're not paying. She has no income. She's lost her job. And she is crying, asking, can I please have my money back? She's now in depression because she has no way of accessing this money. Now, what we're seeing is with bonds, there's no guessing. Are they going to pay me back? Has the company gone under? Are they delaying my payments? The government will pay. 
and it is a good rate and it is a consistent rate where can yes. you get 12 percent net of all fees and charges and taxes and by the way consistently there are instances depending on the interest rate environment that you'll find the interest rates moving to 16 percent 18 percent in bonds okay we have a few yes. minutes to go can you okay. imagine four minutes before yeah. we're done and we have questions so terry um wait who has oh my gosh are we going to be able to handle these questions let's see once you open the seat how do you invest in the bonds or bills can you do it without physically going to yes you can invest without physically going to cbk please write to us uh, the email again is fixed income at fib.co.ke fixed income at fib.co.ke what's the minimum amount i need to invest in bonds Fifty thousand shillings uh, if it's an infrastructure bond, 100,000 shillings. Uh, what is the process of reactivating it? It's gone dormant. All right? Just walk into CBK and activating it. Yeah, simple. Just the same way you activate your bank account in the bank. Okay. Yeah. So somebody is asking what investment banks have branches out, outside Nairobi. Now with the internet, we don't need branches. We are everywhere in the world <laughs> because of the internet. We have apps and online. We're able to serve you wherever yes. you are. So, right? Fixed income at fib.co.ke. Is there a schedule for the infrastructure bond? Is there a schedule? No, there is no schedule. The issue at will. You just need to be on the lookout. They will let you know. But it's available in the secondary market. If you come to us, we'll give you an, uh, the infrastructure bond. It's available. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ringa is asking, great information. How long is the coupon payment disbursed? For how long? Is it for the duration of the bond? For years? the duration of the bond. Yeah. yeah. So if you buy a bond, if it's for 12 years, then for the next 12 years, every six months, you get the coupon. Uh, thank you, Bob. Karina is helping us with answering the questions. Ah, Asante Sana. Evelyn, uh, can the nominee account be used to buy bonds in the primary market? Yes, it can. How can I tell what is a fair price when buying bonds in the secondary market? These are good questions. How do you tell? Uh, What's a fair price? A fair price. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a competitive market. You, you just compare what we are offering and what our competitors will be offering. And most of the time, because stockbrokers, we are regulated by Capital Markets Authority. Uh, we have uh, a fiduciary uh, rule where we look out for your best interests. So most of the time, we broke, uh, stock brokers will give you the best price possible because of the fiduciary rule where you look out. Yeah. And there's also a yield curve. Yes, in the that yield. is generated, and you know the NSC I think posts it weekly. Yes, yes, weekly. And you can actually tell what is the average rate I should expect to get if I'm buying a six-year bond or a five-year bond. A twenty-five-year bond, a twenty-year bond. Uh, can a bond specifically under the FIB nominee account be used as a loan collateral? Yes, it can. Okay. Yeah. Expand on what an SDB bond is. Any benefits? It's a saving development bond. It has only been issued once. It was issued in 2011. It's a 30 year bond. It also has a, a, a tax free component where it is taxed at 10%, not at 15%. Tax free, but it's. No, it's at. Taxed at ten percent. Ten percent, not yes. at. Yeah. Not it's not tax free. It's, yes. It's a discounted tax at ten yeah. percent. Mm. So that's the benefit. Yes. And then this is another question from someone else. When I open the CDS account with FIB, what can I buy or bid directly with CBK? Hmm? I'm sorry. When I open the account with FIDA, can I buy or bid directly with CBK? Or yes, every you can. time I buy or sell, I have to do it via FIB. You can buy uh, directly with CBK. The only thing is that we'll, we'll, we'll bid for you. We'll be the one to bid for you. So we have to we bid just for you. In, instruct us that uh, bid this bond, uh, X amount of money, then we do that for you. Okay. Yeah. Our time is up. Our time is up. So I think what we can do is just sort of wrap up. You can give me your final... Um, Closing remarks and how can people get in touch with you so that then we are able and any questions that come, um, it's okay, you can still post them on uh, the Facebook page that you're on, whether that's on MoneyWise or on FIDA or on the MoneyWise YouTube page and we will come back and respond to them. So just your final, your final thoughts. Uh, I want to demystify bonds and that is one of the reasons why we are having this show. Uh, it is important that we as Kenyans 
be on the forefront in, in, in investing in these bonds. Let us know that there are other avenues of making money other than uh, the traditional ways of, of real estate, of uh, uh, unsafe schemes. Uh, how you reach us, please feel free to drop us an email. We'll guide you further. I know we have not given you, we have not answered all your questions uh, on how you trade in the secondary market. I know that is uh, critical for you because you may be worried if I buy this bond, uh, will I be able to get out of it? Will I be able to get my return? How do I make money if I'm trading in the secondary market? Feel free to drop us an email with all those questions. We'll be able to answer them back and we'll be able to guide you through the process of investing in bonds, more so the treasury bonds. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alex. Yeah. Really appreciate you taking the time to come out. If you have been watching with us, thank you so much for joining us. We've been talking about what investments to make now, specifically using a case study and seeing how this person can come out of the situation they are in to be able to then invest. And we looked at bonds specifically. We drilled down into bonds as one of the investments they can consider. We will continue this conversation. I plan to continue to do these lives once, twice a month twice a month, every other Wednesday. Um, so I've changed it to every other Wednesday. So do subscribe. I have amazing, as always, content coming up. I'm serious. Like next week, you have to watch. Um, so subscribe. Hit us the subscribe button. Share it with others. And we shall be back. Have a fantastic night. And God bless.